and the vegetable matter and debris have been to, to a large extent removed. Cotton is, if you've been spinning wool, and that's what I spin mostly, cotton is alarming because it can be from a fourth of an inch to an inch and a fourth. Really long cotton is, is just barely more than an inch long. And it's really super fine. So it's just kind of scary to even think about how could you possibly add twist to that. So this is ginned cotton. These are punies, P-U-N-I. And punies are just like rologs in cotton language. And you can buy them already made. You can make them yourself. There should be a pair of hand cards for me. Cotton hand cards are a little different than wool ones. They're longer and skinnier because what you're making is a long, skinny pros uh, product. <coughs> this is dyed cotton. This is carded dyed cotton. What did you dye it with? Um, Whatever the teacher had, I don't remember the name. It's in my notes. So I didn't roll this one up. I wanted to try just the sort of cloud effect. This is natural colored brown cotton and a puni and dyed cotton mixed with varying amounts of white <coughs> cotton. And this, this is how much two-ply cotton yarn you can get from one seed, which is still on it. So it was spun right off the seed. And that is a really neat thing to do, especially when you're doing demonstrations. For kids of all ages. So these are cotton seeds. And this is what the inside of a cotton ball looks like. Ball being B-O-L-L. -L. It actually looks a little bit like orange quarters. Literally quarters, because there's four of them. And the seeds are big, like this. There's a seed against a white background. How's that for class? So it's fun sometimes just to take one seed and spin right from the seed. It's kind of a bizarre concept. I mean, can you imagine taking one sheep and spinning right from the sheep? Ooh, maybe not. Spinning from the silk cocoon, uh-huh, same thing. We had, at one of the events that we did at Benita, there was a woman who came to see us on purpose, not by accident, and she went around the, the group and she, she crouched down and talked to everybody about what they were doing, what they were demonstrating, and I had been weaving and I was taking a break, and, and so I was just playing with some cotton, and I started to spin it from the seed <coughs> with my fingers. And she watched me for a little while, and she cried. And I said, you want to try it? And she said, she said, no, it's just so amazing. It's just so amazing. And, and she just stood there and cried, being amazed. And, hmm, this, and this is what we do. And so then she went around and talked to a few more people and regained her composure. And she came back and talked to me again. But she said it was just such an amazing thing that we actually still did this. I think that same woman cried at me. Yes. She, it, was, it was an emotional thing for her. Sometimes it's easier to do things when you're sitting down. This is a version of thigh spinning. This one I call knee spinning because I don't have access to my thigh. <laughs> But this is basically what you do when you're spinning off of a spindle. You're just spinning the, the stuff. Now, this is what the early spinners ran into. This is the problem. What am I going to store this on? You know, pretty soon I'm not going to be able to put any more twist into it. What am I going to store this on? And I'm not even sure I can spin the whole thing before it comes undone. So early people began to look for something that they could store, use to spin, and store. And I think that's that um, the first ones used whatever was at hand, a rock, a piece of stick. So you could wind this up and then keep on spinning. 
There's a lot of cotton on this seed. So then we can let it fly back on itself <laughs> and store it that way, since I don't have a rock. And there is a link and a seed. So this is kind of cloud. This is not a puny. It's not rolled up. It's just flat. It's sort of like a cotton bat, really skinny. So I'm going to try to spin this. Cotton likes to have a little bit of an overlap, not a whole lot. So I'm just going to overlap this a little bit, and I'm going to give it a couple of turns. <coughs> to get it started, because I want to make sure that the new fibers are starting to wrap around the old ones before I get too fancy here. And this is going to be very slubby yarn, or textured. Textured just sounds better. And I can do a little bit with getting those slubs down by letting some of the twist come back here and pulling on them, but it's scary. And this is a Celia Quinn trick. You can squish them. You squeeze the air out, and they get they get smoother, and your yarn begins magically to look more consistent. You can do this with wool as well. Now that was just drafting, bringing it out like that. That's basically just drafting. So I need to add a little bit more twist to it to make sure that it's sound. Whee! So let's see what this looks like as a two-ply. Can you see it? I would show you against my white clothes, but that wouldn't be any good. What about your black pants? <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining for us. I oh, thank you. <laughs> Just so you don't ask any high kicks, and you know that wouldn't work. So to get this wound on, I'm going to reverse the direction that I was tr that I was turning the wheel and wind it on on top of the fat part of the cock. Why does that unwind and twist? When when I'm doing that, yeah. I only did it the other way for a very short time. Okay. Right here at the tip. There are four twists, and that's all I have to unwind. I just have to unwind it so that it comes back to there so I can wind it on. So now watch. I'm going to unwind it, going the opposite direction, back to this point, and now I'm going the same direction, clockwise. See? Okay. You believe me? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that was the test. Now, this is comb top, and this spins into a nice smooth, not so slubby, thread. Oh, it's pretty. See? Mm -hmm. I made a little thread, but I'm getting the cramp in my